to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, January 13th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, China is set to seize an island in the South China Sea by force. Governor Christie's personal tab continues to grow at the taxpayer's expense. And David Knight checks in with Larry Klayman as he continues the fight against the NSA spy network. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, there's a lot of talk in the news today about war. And coming out of China, we see a, in an article from Paul Joseph Watson, China is set to seize the South China Sea Island by force. Official Chinese state media had this headline, sudden major move of Chinese troops this year to recover an island by force. Now, this is an island that was taken 40 years ago and has been held ever since by the Philippines. But listen to what they say in the Chinese newspaper. They say, according to experts, the Chinese Navy has drawn a detailed combat plan to seize the island, and the battle will be restricted within the South China Sea. Well, I don't think that's necessarily going to be restricted if they start something like that. And we've seen bizarre and bellicose statements from the Chinese for the last several months from the official Chinese press. As Paul Joseph Watson points out in the story, there's been strident rhetoric about Beijing's ability to attack U.S. military bases in the Western Pacific, as well as a release of a map showing locations of major U.S. cities and how they would be impacted by a nuclear strike launched from the PLA Strategic Submarine Force. And these things are getting people concerned. And so you have to ask yourself, is this just internal saber rattling? Or is this kind of what Joel Skousen has pointed out, that after using the Chinese to take down the U.S. economically, will they try to use China to take, uh, take us down physically with a war? Or is it really something else? It's maybe just a repeat of history. In this article from Washington's blog, they ask, can we avoid the Thucydides trap with China? And they point out that historically, this has happened. Countries start wars to distract their population from lousy economies. Currency and trade wars end up turning into shooting wars. And this is pointed out by the New York Times back in 2011. They point out that the Peloponnesian War was made inevitable because of the growth of Athenian power and the fear that it caused in Sparta. As they say, history doesn't repeat itself, but it certainly does rhyme. Now there's rumors of war coming from another area as well. It's not just a question of whether or not the Chinese, after we built them up economically, after we transferred military secrets to them, will they be the ones to attack America? Will they be the ones that the globalists use to attack us? Or will it be Al-Qaeda that we created, that we funded, that we trained? And now this is what we see happening today. We've got neocons calling for U.S. military action against Al-Qaeda in Iraq. And this is what they have to say. I'm not saying that we ought to have American troops in thousands of numbers back there, but the withdrawal that occurred in December of 2011 brought this about. The end result of the failure of this administration in Iraq is a symbol of what's to come in Afghanistan if we turn tail and run from there just like we did in December 11 in Iraq. Well, there you go. It's the usual suspects, again, promoting endless war. You know, every time the government fails, they just use that as an excuse to do more of what caused the failure. Now, Kurt Nemo has an excellent article where he breaks down the revolving door and the nepotism between these different neocon think tanks. It's worth a read. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com.